So guys, today we're going to talk about how databases store their data on the disk, uh, how they store it in terms of pages. So let me show you this. This is a clay tablet that is from 3400 BC. This is one of the earliest form of written languages. And this tablet is not a poem, it's not a story, it's not describing something heavenly. It, it is a record of, I think, how much barley was collected. So we can see that uh, since there was writing, human beings were trying to store records. And today we store records in databases in terms of zeros and ones in our computers, in our disks. And today we will see how internally databases are representing, some databases are representing their data on the disk. And our goal is to make storage and retrieval of data as fast and as efficient as possible. So, what is the problem that we have on our hands? We have tabular data, let's say, and we want to store it on the disk. And uh, we want that the writing is very fast. And we also want that if I want, let's say, just this row, that uh, the ID is three and I just want this row, then I can get that row of data quite fast. Um, so how can we think about the data structure? How can we think about um, a storage scheme, let's say, on the disk with which we can accomplish and move forward in solving this problem. So what is a database page? It's the smallest unit of data. Uh, the database reads and writes from the disk. So let's say the database page size is 16 kilobytes. So at once did the database will read the page, uh, read 16 kilobytes from the disk or write 16 kilobytes to the disk. It cannot read 8 kilobytes, it cannot read 18 kilobytes. It cannot do that. Um, the database system ensures that these reads and writes are atomic. That means either the 16 kilobytes will be written or none of it will be. And our job as database designers and the scope of this video is to understand how these pages are organized or how data inside these pages are organized so that we get the maximum efficiency out of it. For now, let's assume that we want to store data of something like this table. Now, it's important to understand that in database pages, not only the table data is stored, but there can be also data like indexes, which can be stored in, in terms of pages. Everything the database stores is stored in terms of pages. That's very important to remember. So what happens is that we have a big file, something like this, and it's filled with these pages, right? So there are many pages that are there in that file and the database system seeks this file and let's say that it wants this page so it just starts reading from here and it will read up to whatever the page size is let's say 16 kilobytes so it will read 16 kilobytes from here and each of these pages is identified by a page id so let's say this has the page id of one this has page id two and and so on and so forth and in each page we are trying to store these tuples tuples meaning um, each the data of each row now it's not always that uh, this tuple data is being stored as I told you there might be indexes in some databases not the tuples are stored I mean not the row data is stored one by one but the column data is stored uh, one by one so sometimes it's row wise sometimes it's column wise how can we store this data in the pages, right? That is the question that we're trying to answer. So let's say this is a page here and what we can do is we can just sequentially store these tuples. So let's say the first uh, row has one and Ankush, the, I mean the, fir the first tuple in this file, um, sorry, in this page, the second has two Magnus. We are just writing out the tuple data on the page. And the third one has 311 and so on and so forth. Now, what can be the problem of systems like this? Here, if we want to write the, sequen uh, the tuple sequentially, each tuple must have the same, 
same amount of space i mean it must be of the same length all the tuples because if we don't know the length of the tuple then how do we know that when one tuple ends and when another tuple starts right that's not really possible for us to know and also guys see let's say we take a large value we take the largest tuple in our database um, really in a practical approach and we pad the other data so let's say 11 has one letter less from the first two names so there would be slight of padding and we know that we know what is the fixed size of the tuple now we want to read and we can read but this padding is the waste of space and we don't want to waste space space on the disk the disk space costs us a lot of money so this is the problem so that's why we cannot just store all the tuples sequentially at this point to solve this problem the concept of slotted pages come so in a slotted page structure we are trying to avoid the problems that we had in the previous model so how is a slotted page how is data inside a slotted page organized how are tuples written inside it so in a slotted page first there is a fixed length header so let me write h here um, which contains information like how many tuples are there and some information about recovery and stuff we will not go much into that it also contains something called a free space pointer which with which uh, at which i'll come to later so in the slotted page we don't store tuples from the beginning instead we store them from the end so t1 t2 something like this and you can see that these tuples are of variable length so what we do is after the header we have something called a slot array and in the slot array what we do is we store the offsets to this tuple and what do i mean by offset uh, offset means the the offset starting from the start of the page so let's say this is position 0 then what will be the position starting at t1 in terms of bytes and i'll show it to a simple calculation how we can get that so and after that we will store the length of this tuple so let's say this tuple is of 1 kilobytes so we'll store it here right and then again we will store the offset to the point uh, or the pointer to this t2 right and after storing the offset we will store the length of the tuple which is let's say 3 kilobytes right um now let's say that i have the slot number i right and i want to get um, the data of the tuple that the slot represents so let's say this is slot number zero this is slot number one right now the slot to get the tuple data first we need to know what is at this slot so let's say we load this page from the disk to our memory at a memory location t and by memory here i mean ram right and now we can operate it with help of our normal pointers in our um, programming languages so let's say um, we load it at memory location t first we must add the header length so now we are here right and after i add the header length to it i will take i and multiply it to the slot size and what should be the slot size um the slot size is let's say 4 bytes for the storing the offset to the tuple and then 4 bytes to store the length of the tuple now once we get this location let's call it location of slot of i then we can take then add the location of slot of i we will read 4 bytes and we will get offset of i right and we will also get the length in gth i'm forgetting the spelling of length man uh length of i right so now we will take p plus offset let me just say oi 
and from here we will reach at this location um, assuming i is equals to 0 41 right and from this location we will read this length of i number of bytes we take that we convert it into the tuple data uh, to the data format that we have so let's say my tuple is something like this right let's say my tuple is something like this where the first the first column is an integer so it will take let's say four bytes and the rest is a string right so in terms of that we will just uh, take the take out the data and we'll parse that data and we'll give results to the user now you will notice one thing here that in a slotted page the slots array grows from the first and the tuple data grows from the last right so both the tuple data and the slot array is coming towards each other and when they will meet we will see that we have no space left and then we will have to create a new page and store our data there now i talked about the free space pointer what is a free space pointer so the free space pointer points to the location where my free space is available so let's say um, we have got some more tuples here so t3 is here t4 is here right the free space pointer will store this location where we can when when we get a new tuple to store in the page we can we can first read this page from the disk we can go to this offset pointed by the free space pointer we can go to this offset um, write the new tuple in this uh, page memory and then we take the page and write it back to the disk right so that is how we can write new tuples now let's say I want to delete a tuple let's say I want to delete this tuple number one what I do what uh, sometimes we generally do is we come here and we just uh, mark this slot to be deleted so let's say we store it minus one and minus one here so we mark this slot as deleted we don't actually go and delete this t2 here at first now there are some databases which actually do delete the the data at their once at once um, when we are writing the data back to the disk uh, and there are some databases which don't uh, delete the data then and there but then we can do something like vacuuming to actually delete the data from the disk and postgres um, a really famous relational database does this they don't actually delete the data they just mark that slot to be deleted and then when we do vacuum with the, there is a command in postgres called vacuum then what they do is they delete this t2 actually from the page and they take t3 and move it back here so they take all the all the tuples and move it back to back so to not waste any space and this is called compaction now we can see that each tuple right or each row in the database in our case can be um, located with two coordinates right first we need the page id right in which page it is stored and next we need the slot id so these two values combined can locate a tuple exactly on a disk and this kind of this is kind of used as a pointer we may call it as a row id right there can be other names too and uh, this row id can actually suffice as a pointer when we will talk about something like a indexing where we need to point to an exact record uh, indexing is out of scope of this video we will maybe talk about it in a later one so what you need to do is hit that subscribe button and hit that subscribe button now let's say in this page we want to store a large amount of data which let's exceeds the page size it exceeds 16 kilobytes something like that right so what we do here is we take a pointer from this page and we point it to another page which you call overflow page and we store it to and store our data there and we may take another pointer from there and store and to another page where we might keep on storing our pages uh, storing our data in pages 
Sometimes some databases even store data in external files. These are generally called external tables. In Oracle, there is this B file um, data type, which I think stores data in a external file, not in the database files. And stuff happens like that to store large data, to store all these, to face all these corner cases that comes up in enterprise applications and all those things. So let's now go to Postgres and see some row IDs in action, how Postgres is telling us where the rows that we created the table with is stored. So in Postgres, if we execute commands like, uh, I mean, queries like select CTID from some table. So CTID is kind of the row ID in case of Postgres. It actually means the physical location of the of, of the row. So here we can see the it says 0, 0,1, 0, 0,2. I'm not sure if you can see it because it's quite small. Uh, you might have to pause and see uh, a bit. So it says 0, 0,1, 0, 0,2, 0, 0,3, 0, 0,4. So that means that row is stored in the zeroth page and in the fourth slot or the fourth tuple of the zeroth page. Right? That's what we have here. So let's try to delete something from this table. So let's say, let me delete, let delete uh, from one call where C1 is equal to four, right? Let's execute this, right? One row is deleted. And we, when we come back, we will see that actually um, that row when it's deleted, but the other row still has the same CTID. So that means when that row gets deleted, the other rows um, are not moved around, right? They are in the same place, but we are marking that um, tuple to be deleted from that page. So guys, I think that would be enough for this video. It's a small introduction on slotted pages. If you like this video, leave a like. I mean, I don't like I hate begging for likes and subscription at the end of the every video but well we have to do what needs to be done so guys leave a like and if you want more content like this subscribe to the channel and uh, we will see you in the next one